Okay, in this presentation, we're going to uh, talk about the EDI AS2 communication protocol, uh, AS2 communication in general, and what Blue Seer software has to offer with regards to AS2 functionality. Uh, Blue Seer recently released version 6.3 this past summer. Uh, one of the main additions to the release is an AS2 module. Now, uh, AS2 communication, uh, there are plenty of software packages out there to do AS2 communication. Most of the AS2 packages that I'm aware of are commercially based. They do come with a price tag. Uh, but this AS2 offering is a free offering. Uh, it is bundled within Blue Seer, which is also a free offering. You can download it at blueseer.com. Uh, it's an ERP and an EDI tool set. Uh, and as far as I know, this is the first freely available AS2 module within, uh, embedded within an ERP application. Okay, the audience that uh, is intended, this presentation is intended for is those who are already familiar with AS2 communication. It's not for the novice or the layman. Uh, for people that understand the AS2 protocol and uh, understand the EDI concepts in general because we're going to go through it pretty quick and we're just looking to see how Blue Seer administrates it and executes an AS2 transaction. So you do have to have some basic understanding of the AS2 uh, protocol as it stands. Okay, some of the topics that we're going to discuss is, uh, well, we're going to introduce the AS2 communication protocol protocol uh, at a very high level. Uh, we're also going to look at the menus involved in Blue Seer with regards to AS2. Uh, we're going to look at the menus that are, are used to administrate, to configure, and to uh, actually execute an AS2 transaction. We're also going to look at uh, executing an AS2 transaction, a test transaction, uh, simulating a trading partner by loop, doing a loopback test of sending the document to ourselves. And then finally we're going to look at uh, public encryption keys. Uh, one of the major uh, aspects of AS2 is that you have to exchange public keys with your trading partner. Uh, Blue Seer does offer the capability of creating a private pair public key uh, and providing that public key in a .cer format to your trading partner. It is also the location where you would store their public key and register that for the Blue Seer application. Okay, so let's look at a, at a high level of what an AS2 transmission is. Uh, it's essentially an AS2 HTTP post from one server to another. Uh, it transfers that you post the document. It could be a purchase order, it could be an invoice or whatever, uh, over an HTTP post protocol and then you will receive back uh, what is called an MDN uh, that verifies that, that it's received. Now, AS2 is a push system only, so for you to get documents back other than the MDN, for you to get a 997 acknowledgement, for example, or an invoice, they have to push to you. Uh, it is not a situation where you can connect to their server and then do a get or a, uh, a retrieve. Uh, this is a one-way only, AS2 push only. Uh, you have to push your documents to your trading partner and the trading partner has to push their documents to you. So with that said, that it implies that there is, all, there is a push mechanism on each trading partner and there's also a listener mechanism uh, for the AS2 transmission. Okay, so to set up a new AS2 configuration for a, a new trading partner, uh, there are really three things that are required. Uh, and, it's, and it's documents that have to be exchanged between both parties. So each trading partner would have to exchange these documents. And that is, uh, the first one is uh, your AS2 ID. So each partner has an AS2 ID and you would exchange that. You would also exchange each partner's uh, listener URL. So you would have a URL on a port that you are listening for AS2 transactions on and then they would have a, a URL with a port that they are listening for uh, trans, AS, AS2 transactions. So you would exchange that information. Then you would finally exchange the uh, your public key certs. Um, this is one of the, the bigger aspects of AS2 communication is the exchanging of the public certs for signing and for encryption of the document because AS2 uh, by definition is, is a secure transport of the document or at least should be a secure transport of the document. Okay, um, so now let's let's uh, look at launching Blue Seer. We're going to launch Blue Seer, and we're going to walk through some of the menus that administrate uh, the AS2 
functionality. And then we're going to also actually do a, a loopback test to show the, uh, an example, or dem demonstrate an example of pushing an AS2 document to a trading partner, which we will simulate as ourselves, and then receiving back that MDM. Okay, this demonstration is, is on this, uh, for this demonstration, we're doing this on a Linux OS, uh, Linux Mint version 20, if I remember correctly. And I have already installed the Blue 3 application here. This is the path where it is. And this is the directory structure of BlueSeer on a Linux environment. Now, it's important to say that uh, if you downloaded the Windows version, uh, the procedures and processes and the concepts that we're talking about here are exactly the same. Uh, you'll just have your own um, Windows environment versus the Linux environment. Uh, the listener service that we will kick off here, and I'll show you that uh, in a few minutes, uh, is exactly the same. And uh, the command to do that uh, for Windows and the Linux environment. So let's uh, let's start up. Let's fire up uh, BlueSeer. The username and password is admin and admin respectively for your initial uh, launch. You you will want to change that password in a production environment. That kind of goes without saying. Um, oh, and one other note too: when you do first download BlueSeer and you first launch it, there is a dialog box that will be prompted for you. And in that dialog box, it's asking you for the country of origin. The purpose of that is to establish the default currency of the ERP system that you're, that you're firing up. Uh, so once you do that, and you answer the question, and then it'll ask you to start up, and then you'll, that was a one-time event. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the, uh, the menus that are involved in uh, administrating AS2 communication on the BlueSeer application. So you have the AS2 maintenance menu with a nav code, the PKS, which is your, for managing certs and keys, and that's a maintenance menu. You have your EDI control where you assign your server AS2 ID and your server keys and certs. And then you have a, a utility that is your, essentially your API listener for listening to AS2 transmissions. Uh, this nav code, by the way, is essentially this text box here. It's a shortcut for for getting to that menu instead of going the long route of EDI, AS2, etc., etc. So for we'll look first at the EDI control nav code, EDIC. And in here, this stores the information regarding uh, basically EDI environment in general, but there are four key pieces of information that are relevant to the AS2 side. This field here is for storing your system AS2 URL. This is the URL that your trading partner will be posting AS2 transactions to you. Typically, this is uh, your outward facing URL that is natted to this specific server and this path so that this listener is visible to the, uh, the outside world. Uh, this here is your system AS2 ID. Uh, and then this is your AS2 ID, your system's AS2 ID. And then here is your system signing cert and encryption cert, and it can, they can both be the same. Uh, BlueSeer comes with default setups of uh, a BS test, which is just a test uh, test key public cert. Okay, that's for SEDI control. The other, uh, we're gonna look at the PKS maintenance, which is where you manage these certs and keys, PKSM. And if you look at some of the, uh, I've got a few stored in here already. This comes by default. Uh, this is the one we were just looking at in the EDI control file. Uh, this is a default key for, for testing with. And it's a key pair, it's your private key for your server. Uh, you can actually view the public key aspect of that. And this is the key that you would provide to your trading partner. This is the public key itself. You can cut and paste this out or you can actually export to a, this to a file and then provide that to your trading partner. Uh, you can also set up a, uh, uh, once your trading partner provides you with their public key, you would want to register that here. So you would say, uh, new company, new code. Uh, description, new company. And you would want that to be type PEM. Key pair is for internal. Store is basically a, store, a location to store these key pair. And then PEM is what you would use for your .CER and .DER that your trading partner provides you. 
So typically your trading partner will provide you with a zipped file of a .cer, which is in PIM format. And then you would store that format on a file drive somewhere. So in this case, I do have a test one, and it is located in EDI, certs, and I called it customer cert. So what we would do is EDI, certs, is it certs or cert, certs, slash customer cert dot CER. And if you look at that cert, by the way, it looks just like the other one. That's how the dot CERs look, and that is your customer, your trading partner's public key. Okay, once you have that, you click Add, and now you have your trading partner's public key registered for use in the AS2 maintenance module. So now, one of the other menus, uh, the most uh, important menu, is the AS2 maintenance menu. And this is where you maintain the configs of your AS2 partners and where you actually execute a AS2 push. So we're going to, what is the nav code, AS2M, AS2M. And we're going to simulate the creation of a new AS2 trading partner. Uh, we just created the, uh, we registered their cert as new code, if I remember right. There it is. And they're, they're going to say it's the same thing as their signing cert. So that's one piece of information. The other inf information is their AS2 ID. And we're just going to assume it's new code ID. And then you need their URL, their port, their path, and their protocol. And we're just going to simulate that as well. Uh, newcode.com, port 4080, path, uh, AS to their, path to their AS, AS2, uh, an HTTP protocol. And then we're going to click. So once you've added that and you've added the AS2 ID and you've added their encryption, or their uh, public key cert, that is the three pieces of information that is required to set up an AS2 configuration. Uh, then you can just click add. Uh, field cannot be blank. Oh, description. <laughs> New code. Yes, description. Click add. And now that should be registered in the AS2 maintenance. Uh, that's the wrong one. I just did. There we go right there. And that's it. That's the configuration for an AS2. Now, most of the time, uh, there are other things that you have to set up, but it's not necessarily dealing with the AS2 configuration. It's dealing primarily with firewalls. Uh, and that's one of the headaches of AS2 uh, setups for, for new trading partners is that your firewall and their firewall has to be commensurate with receiving transmissions of this port and this, protocol and this URL uh, through your firewall and through their firewall. Uh, AS2 can be very complex, particularly when it comes to firewalls. Uh, but once you have the config set up, 99% of your problems are going to be with firewalls. And once you've got past the firewalls, the transmissions will work like clockwork. clockwork. Okay, so that's, that's set up. Uh, but we're going to look at the, uh, the loopback uh, record that we already have installed here. And so what we're going to do, this is a loopback configuration that I have set up for submitting a transaction to ourselves. And uh, this is the URL, localhost, this is the port, and this is the path, and the user ID is BS test. The certs have already been assigned. So uh, clicking run here will actually push a document to that URL, to that path, for that user ID. And essentially the document is going to be any documents that are in the source directory. This is the source directory, and currently right now in this source directory we have uh, AS2 out we have a file called empty.txt. Uh, so when I click run here, it'll push documents out of this directory to this URL and simulate it as our customer, but it's really to us. So it'll actually land back in this destination directory. So we should see a file drop into the in directory and then be removed from the out directory. So I'm going to click run here, but I'm almost guaranteed it's going to fail because, and yes, what we haven't done is, if this was simulated, if this was actually sent to a trading partner, that trading partner would be listening uh, for this transaction push. But we are sending this to ourselves, and we didn't start up the listener. So what we're going to do, that's why it said connection refused or timeout from server. So what we're going to do is start up the listener. And I have that preset up here. Starting up the listener, Oops. 
is one of the uh, the major actions that you have to do to set up AS2. The listener is always on. So once you're in a production environment, the listener is always listening for AS2 pushes from your trading partner. It is on 24-7. Uh, and the, the command to start the listener in Blue Sear for AS2 transmissions is right here. This command, uh, you can be running the Linux background as a background job, or it can be run from a Windows DOS prompt, uh, or typically from on the Windows side, it would be run as a Windows service. And the command is exactly the same on Linux as it is in Windows, except for this uh, the colons in between. It should be semicolons for the class path. So I'm going to fire that off. Yes, and this is what you will see once it's fired. It'll stay running. So this is a continuously running application that's waiting and listening for AS2 transmissions from your trading partners. So now that that's running, we're going to go back to our application and we're going to try this again. And it passed. So the listener received the transaction that we just pushed to it and it responded back with what is called an MDN. And what you're seeing right here is the actual MDN response. An MDN is a, a message disposition notice and it's basically one of the, uh, the better aspects of AS2 in that there's a non-repudiation nature of AS2 and that if I'm able to encrypt and sign the document and I'm able to push it to your server and if you receive it you will construct this MDN file and send it back to me and the MDN if I get this MDN then that is the acknowledgement that you did indeed receive the the, uh, the transmission. If you do get a pass uh, you will see that Oh, there's our file on our end directory, so it should have been taken out of the out directory, which it has been. And you will also see uh, an MDN, which is this one right here, uh, stored in the MDN file. Uh, every transaction that you push will have a message ID, and this is the message, it will be a unique message ID, and this is it. The MDN is supposed that they construct is supposed to be uh, constructed with that message ID and that that is the case so this is an actual MDN that is uh, replied back to our push transaction even though we were pushing it to our cells we replied back to our cells with uh, with the MDN with the appropriate MDN so that's it that's us uh, and from, from a point of view of just uh, execution AS2 is a fairly simple process you're pushing a document to a trading partner most of your headache is is involved in setting that up and configure it on both sides to have a, a kind of a handshake uh, nature between the transactions. Once that's done and you've got your firewall set up, uh, if you see an MDN, you see pass, and you know for cer certain that you were able to post that transaction to that trading partner. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, feel free to give it a try. You can download it at bluesear.com. Uh, if you have any problems or questions, reach out to uh, our website at bluesear.com. There's a contact page there. You can also go to the, uh, the project page on GitHub. There is a, a tickets list there where you can issue a ticket for any, uh, any bugs that you find. Uh, if you do find a bug, please report it. We would like to hear any positive or negative feedback. Uh, and that contact information is, should be in the help about section. And yeah, there's our project site there. There's an email you can send uh, any questions to. And yeah, feel free to download it, use it, give it a spin. Let us know what you think and enjoy. Thank you.